spoilers, I really like learning American history through literature. I've decided not to use it, but it's earned a permanent place on my bookshelves. Keep watching to see the pros and cons of what this curriculum has to offer and see if it's something that would work well for your homeschool. If you would like to follow along with the family style curriculum rating system, you can find that document linked down in the description and fill it out for yourself. I would love to know what you would rate this curriculum or any others that you're using in your homeschool. So make sure to send me them after you have completed it or just tell me in the comments, what would you rate this curriculum? The first thing to know is that the grade inclusion for this curriculum is listed as K through eight. So you are getting a curriculum that is really good for a majority of your household. I love that. I love that this is a Charlotte Mason living literature style of book. It also has lots of project suggestions. So it could be literature based, project based, whatever you think is best learning style for your family that you would like to do. You're going to find those suggestions in here. Affordability wise, this one gets a five star. It is so affordable, under $25. You can get it for your family and it's non-consumable. So you'll be able to use it for forever. That's fantastic. It is so hard to find a curriculum that is like that. This is one of those. Also, depending on how creative you are, you might be able to say that this covers multiple subjects as you include journaling, handwriting for your kids, or those projects and art classes, or as the claim goes with this one, it is basically just a history curriculum. You would be adding extra things onto that. But for that price level, it's still worth it. The US history that's covered in here is the colonial times of the 1600s to pretty recent 1968 post-war times. Our next category is quality and satisfaction. Now keep in mind, I haven't used this, but as a curriculum nerd, I have read through most of it. It is so easy to understand. I think it is visually appealing. While there are no colors in this, the simplicity of the layout is very appealing to me. And my children aren't necessarily going to be looking at this. They're going to be looking at living books. And the visual appeal in those is really what is going to captivate our children as opposed to a textbook interesting and engaging. Of course, your kids are going to be sitting next to you side by side, reading books. So great for kids to be doing. Also, they've got that hands-on experience with some of the projects that are recommended. Polished, clearly understood, user-friendly, absolutely. The organization in here is super simple. Let's go ahead and crack it open and let you see what I mean by that. There are seven units in this book. Each unit starts with a prologue. This is going to give you the setup of the story. What is going to be happening, followed by the setting. Here, it's going to tell you uh, where the story takes place, give you context for the story. You're going to find suggested books that set the scene for the stories that you will be reading. I love the language component here, and this is where some of your language arts can come in as well. These are terms of that time period that your child might need to be familiar with so you can be going through them. Then you have the plot of the story. So this is where all the action happens. These are your book recommendations, uh, both for independent reading and short books, those chapter books, maybe you're doing them as a family. There are grades beside each recommendation so you know what would be appropriate for your child in there, even how long the book is, and a brief description of what the book is about. I find this to be incredibly helpful. Next, we come up to the dialogue. Now, I would call this the dinner time discussion. I would bring up some of these questions of what did we talk about? What do you think about the harsh conditions on the ship or the harsh winters or those diseases? Tell dad what we read about today. This is giving you an outline of some ideas that you can be talking about for further discussions. For continued learning, outside the book, you've got this reading between the lines portion. It's going to give you suggestions of activities that you can do with your kids, dipping candles, making a feather quill, tin lanterns, corn husk doll. 
These are all of those cute, really nice things to do with your family. Post them on Instagram, share them with others so that they see what you guys are learning about. These are just really fun suggestions. There's also game suggestions that you might wanna play. These might be games that children were playing back in the day or games that you can just play to really reaffirm what you are learning. If you like cooking, there are recipes from that time period to be trying. The epilogue at the end of the unit is really for wrapping everything up. What have we learned about? Is there anything that we should include or go study a little bit more? This is really going to help make sure that you covered all of your bases. There's also the timeline so that you can make sure that you did cover all of those things and have that visual if you are keeping a timeline of things that you might want to be pinning. Now you're going to move in to the next unit. At the back of the book, there is an appendix with further things that you might need or want to copy out, and you can do that for your family. There are like flags that go along with some of the states or a stitch sampler that you can be doing cross stitch with your kids on. I think this is really neat. So I do believe that this is polished, clearly understood and user friendly. I also think it has practical expectation. It's, it has seven units. If you divide those up into five weeks for each time period, you would be able to finish it within a year. And for the younger students, it recommends just doing it three times a week. Now you could also so extend any amount of this. If there's something you get stuck on and really like or something happens, you can extend it to two years also. It does talk about that at the beginning of the book, but it doesn't give a sample like checkoff list of what you would be doing every day. So you really have to be a mom that's okay with kind of creating your own schedule and going with the flow rather than having everything laid out before you. Yes, it is non-consumable, so it has multiple years of value. We are giving it a five in this category for ease of of use, flexibility, absolutely. Learning style inclusion, yeah, we've got all those different hands-on examples. We're reading from books. It even gives YouTube suggestions of things you might want to look up. I love that. Exciting and desirable and continued enjoyment. I think so. Like, how simple is this to just pick it up and use it again in the future and going to read books with your kids? My kids always desire to read books with me. So I think that that portion is there. Now, I will say this isn't a perfect curriculum. So when it comes to prep time, I'm going to not give it a point. You are going to, and, and these aren't bad things either. This is just a little bit more complicated. You do need to use that prep time to really understand what is coming up. How are you going to go about it. What activities are you or aren't you going to do? What do you need to get for supplies? Uh, what books are you going to get from the library? And can you make sure to get them from the library in time? This just takes more effort. Um, it, it's part of the game, honestly, here. You might not like that, and that could be a really big negative. I think I'm a little burnt out from last semester doing that with the curriculum that we were doing. Um, so there is a prep time effort that needs to go into it. Learning time-wise, though, very flexible. And so we're gonna give it a point here, but there's four points in this category. Now for secular curriculums, we stop at 20 points that it could be out of. There is nothing in here that I have seen that is evident to me that there is a Christian perspective at all. So we're not gonna continue with the faith-based portion that I usually rate curriculums with if they do say that they come from a Christian standpoint. Overall, this gives learning history through literature an 18 out of 20, almost perfect score. And I think it's almost a perfect curriculum too. So I'm really happy with that outcome. What do you think? Would you use this curriculum? Do you think that the rating was pretty accurate there? Let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna have another review for you again soon. So make sure you're subscribed so you see when that comes out. I'll see you then, bye-bye.